Okay, you are live. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good evening and welcome to the senior liaison meeting for Monday, January 25th. Uh, the first agenda item uh, is a public comment section. And having just checked the queue, we have uh, no one in the queue to make public comments. So we'll move on to approval of the December meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes of the senior liaison committee meeting of December 28th. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries 3-0. John, do you have a report on the Community Senior Center project? Uh, well, it's pretty much similar to the report gave last Tuesday at the town council meeting. Um, they're still continuing on with the, the duct work and the uh, roof curbs they're installed the new HVAC um, they're actually putting together the uh, playground equipment and um, the interior walls are, have been put up as well as the uh, um, drywall and uh, Mason continues working and the plumbers putting in the bathrooms and, and, and so on and uh, they got the electrical outlets in the walls and they've been inspected and uh, they're working on the ceiling layouts for the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing and the fire protection that goes above. And other than that, we're working on processing a, a furniture order to get that in the pipeline to get coming in as well as the exercise equipment. Okay, any questions for John? That's no. very similar to our council. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, yeah, you were worried about a little bit of delay on the ordering side, more, more like the re supplies and retail type stuff. Is that? I think our first COVID delay, believe it or not, was related to a special brick. They call it a bullnose brick. And uh, the factory where it was made was shut down for a while because of COVID. So that sort of threw off finishing up the masonry walls, but um, they were, I was told they were anticipating getting the order in last Friday, but I haven't confirmed that, but that's like the first one, but it could be those little items that will hold up moving the, pro, uh, uh, the project along, but that's the first one that I heard of. Thank you. Anything else on uh, the senior center? No. All right, um, let's move on to the staff update on um, the Senior Center activities, programs, and then vaccine updates. Okay, well, I'm just calling Denise. You can see her walking <laughs> away because she has no sound. So, her, oh. so Denise, come back over to your chair and I'm gonna relay because we're gonna figure this out. So it's your turn to give an update. So I don't know that they can hear it on my phone. If you can't, I'll repeat it, go ahead. Okay, um, still working with Mike Dill at AARP to um, have tax help. Can everybody hear her or do, should I repeat it? Okay. Oh, they, they can hear you. Hear. My phone's on okay. speaker, so. Sorry about that. I'm, uh... No, that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so still working with Mike Dill. Um, hopefully, in we're trying to get the safest way to for the clients and also for the volunteer preparers. So um, while I'm doing is taking names and phone numbers, and as soon as we know what we can do, talking also with the district coordinator that um, we'll give the calls back and hopefully set up appointments. Uh, all our Zoom programs are still going well. The Central Connecticut State University Scholar for Life, I send out weekly reminders for their what they're offering, um, our exercise programs, and also um, friendship tours. They're still working with me on a monthly basis for entertainment. And for February, they're having a musical Valentine on February 10th at 2 p.m. and it is free. So I'll be sending out flyers, you know, via email. 
And then our special project for the seniors to get involved is our uh, Valentine appreciation cards to go out to our veterans. So we have made up kits with the um, nice cards with hearts where they will design and then place on the back of it uh, a nice um, appreciation saying thank you to the veterans. And then we're going to offer our first and uh, Valentine drive through box lunch pickup for our seniors on Friday, February 12th. Um, and registration is required. And the pickups will start at 1130 and go until 1230. And um, also, besides the um, programming, and uh, I've seen an increase with uh, for the month of January, people, the seniors reaching out, trying to get help with medication, food, and um, insurance. So what I've been doing is filling out forms for the Medicare savings program that will help cost, keep the cost of their medication down, and also food um stamps and also the food pantry and trying to switch them over to insurance that are lower cost but still get the same benefits during our special enrollment which is january through march and they come in and we fill out the application together and on the state of connecticut dss online and we're t still continuing to do our wellness calls to all the seniors to make sure that they're well and if they need anything. And that's about it. Any questions or? Questions? Um, yeah, just, uh, I, I know we have Mary Hogan coming up from the library on, on Zoom activities and it, it Denise, it had come to my attention uh, just because I know some folks that play trivia and they were doing it through another library um, because of a connection. You know, somebody works there and they and, and they so they rustled up a bunch of folks. And I, I have to I'm embarrassed. I did not know how many services we provide. Rocky Hill is is providing online in terms of Zoom activities like uh, like trivia nights or what have you. And uh other presentation, I guess you have lectures and, and things like that, that, that they, are these, are, do you have a head count? Um, it, 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 you mean for the different programs? Like right, the, logging in, would you know who logs in on a regular basis? And, um, it's hard to say because they have to go through the, like friendship tours, they go directly through them. Um, for the seat for Central Connecticut State University, they go through them. If it's um, one of FSI's our funded, program, oh, one I'm of sorry. our funded programs, Ed, then John Murphy helps us out by sending out a Zoom. So a couple of the um, exercise instructors, if it's Rocky Hill specific, and we have gotten the instructor or paid for the program, we then send out the Zoom link. A lot of the um, programs that Denise had found in our neighboring towns are via other agencies that have, they will let her know and then she includes that and blasts it out. So those would go directly because those are free and they're open to anybody from their own computer. So we don't have a count from each town. It's often mixed. We only know how many of our seniors and even that sometimes is difficult because we can send out the links but you don't necessarily know who logged on because they're not paying for programs right now. Is and that just also too what we have an author that is um, turning our stories into children's books that started on the 21st of January. So I have 10 um, seniors that registered. So um, the exercise programs, you're, it's an average of 15 to 20. Wow. Okay. All right. For the class. Thank you. Anything else on questions? I have a couple. Um, first of all, I just wanted to check. Um, are we still on, on uh, pace for having the programming matrix for the February meeting? Yes. 
Yes, okay. we are. We have distributed the, um, we met with Parks and Rec and with Library, um, and we all have the schedule. So at this point, we are now filling in the actual schedule and due to meet again. Mary, what's the exact date? Do you, second week in February? Yeah, yeah. Yep, and then we will review that and then start to give um, a draft to the town manager for review and it, then it will pass it out. So we are we are on track and working on it. Perfect, thank you. Um, also, I just wanna volunteer again, if you need help on the 12th to distribute uh, the lunches, I am available. So if you need additional help, please feel free to call. And uh, also, what can we do to help with the, do we st do you still need uh, gift cards for food? And what, what can we do to help with the seniors? Um, I don't think we need gift cards right now. We got a huge amount for the holidays and we've been able to distribute. And, and what has helped in that sense is we are able to take on uh, donations again. So we're sanitizing donations. Um, so I think so far so good on that realm. We've been able to meet the needs of all. What also is, is cut down as far as the imminent needs senior specific for that is that um, the housing authority has gotten a grant on their own as well. So they have a supplemental food pantry down there as well as a few drives that I think Carrie Wood worked on with the Girl Scouts for around the holidays or whatnot. So I know that Housing Authority specifically um, did get some extra help and boost. And we still service um, any senior regardless of their residency. So even if they live down there, they still have full access to um, our, our food pantry as well. Um, but other than the food pantry, um, a lot of an emergency help too. But other than that, a lot of our programming for the seniors at this time of year is heating and things through programs. So they're not necessarily monetary. Um, and so we were, because there weren't a lot of donation base, there was a ton of gift cards. And I, I say this every time this topic comes up, but we're very lucky in this town because there's a lot of generosity. So when we have put out the need, it has been above and beyond response. So we did get enough gift cards to cover, adopt a family programs and keep the food pantry running. And so it's slowly um, being restocked. And, and so we're actually in good shape for that. But thank you for that. Um, as far as Denise goes, I think, did you hear Denise the offer for on the 12th, Mimi, uh, for yeah. handout? Okay. Um, yep. Okay, perfect. So uh, going forward, I think uh, we are just gonna really keep um, focusing on programs, uh, Denise and I've talked about as far as the, the giving away, pro, um, you know, having them pick up things. So like this month, we're trying to do the box lunch and things to utilize what we do have um, because we had a little extra. So the purchasing of the box lunch and, and trying to do some things to get seniors out of the house, you know, down can you, something to do, something to hand back in. It, it, we just have really found that that works. Um, it helps us keep in touch with a lot of our senior residents um, from the senior center that we normally would have seen more often. And it helps them feel like they're giving back. So we've been able to the last couple of times connect it with either families for the holidays or veterans this time. So it's really helping us work on those connections. So, so far so good, but I, to answer that question and I'm going into that because if we have uh, more and more, which we have seen a steady increase in participants for that. So that might be something that we have to pull in some volunteers for on a bigger scale if we can reach more because it, it seems now that word is getting out that that is a well-received sort of um, idea that we're putting out for seniors to be able to pick something up and do something at home and then return it. So we will keep that in mind. Thank you. Mm. Denise, I just want to report back from uh, last month. I did reach out to the Connecticut Society of CPAs to see if they had any tax help programs. And unfortunately, I haven't heard back from anybody there yet. Um, but if, uh, if AARP is going to try to do something, um, yeah, I won't follow up because uh, I don't think they have a program in place. Well, it would be nice to know also, too, um, if they will accept new clients on a, you know, low, almost low, you know, the, the seniors that use this, the service get it for free. Okay. I, I'll follow up again and just see if um, I can get um, 
get an answer one way or the other. Right. Okay. Uh, any update on the vaccines and what's happening locally? Um, so all the information that I have comes through Central Connecticut Health District. I know that um, we have to be careful what we put out there because there's nothing definitive yet. I can tell you that um, the communication I have um, several times a week is that they are working diligently. Obviously, they're following state guidelines as well, but Human Services is maintaining a list for any and all residents to give us a call. Uh, we have a list. We just take your birthday, your address, and phone number, and therefore um, we utilize this list so that if vaccines become available to the next category, or if because right now it's still currently 75 and above, if anybody is having difficulty getting online or phone call or registering because they are eligible, and also that list we're maintaining so that it can be prioritize and, and people who are in need, either homebound, medically compromised with comorbidity, any, any issue that may um, create difficulty. Transportation we're working on to provide. So we do have a list we are maintaining in human services. All you have to do is call our main number. We will put your name and contact information on the list. So therefore, if any um, vaccinations become available either townwide or the rules change and they open up somewhere, we can immediately contact those that are the highest priority and who are looking to receive some update or information. And we will certainly do that. So at this point, we don't have any um, access to any vaccinations that you know doctors' offices and whatnot don't. But we certainly will help assist any resident in getting in uh, registered for one, finding a location, getting transportation, and maintaining that list to reach back out for those who have not yet been able to receive it, but who need to be prioritized. And Melissa, what number? What's the main phone number for anybody that's listening? And I'll repeat it at the council meeting. Sure, eight six zero. Yep. Two five eight. Two seven nine nine. Okay. Denise's number is eight six zero. Yep. Two five eight. Two seven eight six. Perfect. All right. Yeah, I think we're all waiting for uh, the vaccine to become more readily available. Yeah. Uh, but the good news is Connecticut seems to be doing much better than other states. So. Yes. And so far the last update I received was uh, the next category for 65 and above. They're looking at the very beginning of February. So if everybody can just continue to hang in there and do the best they can to remain as safe as possible, hopefully in a couple of weeks, cross our fingers sooner, but we should be able to open up which will be a huge category of people as well, so. Uh, the health district did do a tour of the high school in Mosier last week. And I guess it was decided upon that if they do never get vac vaccines in and they're gonna hold uh, um, one of these vaccine shooting clinics in Rocky Hill, it looks like they're gonna hold it at Mosier School. But as of right now, everything's on hold, waiting to get an allotment from the state, because I believe what they put in for this week, uh, they didn't get anything. So, uh, and then they're coordinating it between the uh, three other towns as well. But if we do have something in Rocky Hill, it's most likely going to be at Mosier School. Okay. Any other questions on uh, vaccines? All right. Do we, John, do we have anything for new business? No, I don't have anything. Do you, Melissa? I do not, no. Okay. Well, then we'll welcome Mary Hogan to the call. And um, I, Ed gave a little background to how this came about. And I'll just, Ed, I'll fill in the blanks a little bit and keep it generic. But um, Ed spoke to some people who were involved in a trivia program uh, in another town from Rocky Hill, participating in another town and thought it was a great program. So he reached out to Melissa, John, Mayor, and myself. And John said that um, Mary would be the, the point on this, only to find out that you almost have this program or similar program running. So A, we wanna learn a little bit about what you're doing, but I think the bigger scheme of this opportunity is we have programs going from the library, the senior um, human services side, as well as park and rec. I know we're working on that for February, 
uh, but just kind of get an opportunity to see, to put the whole gamut together for everybody. And I think that's what we're heading for, kind of a communications uh, drive. But we'd love to hear what you've been doing at the library. I know a lot of Zoom and is a lot of Zoom educational. Right, right. So what the library's really changed over the last several years, um, more that, you know, we're not the place of just getting books and leaving. Um, we've been more of a destination. And we've had um, like 30,000 before COVID people attend different programs. And we run the gamut from birth to all over, but we don't have a, um, a set age. I mean, like, it's not... Um, just seniors fits all different ages. Although I have to tell you, in the old days, pre-COVID, most of the people were um, older that attended, but we never asked ages or anything like that. But so when COVID hit, like last March, we took a look at everything that we offered and we decided how could we change it over to Zoom. And we pretty much did most of it. There was a couple of programs like the English as a Second Language, we didn't move over. but. Um, we tried to move everything over. So starting end of March, April, it was anything that we had scheduled, we reached out to our book discussions, our uh, author talks, our any kind of lectures that we had, and we moved it over to Zoom. The key thing was a lot of people needed to know how to use Zoom. So we started offering one-on-one. -on -one. First, we got people who had to use Zoom for their um, work. And then we got started getting people who wanted to use Zoom because their families were using Zoom. So around Easter, they heard that they were going to be invited to a Zoom Easter. So we started training. Most of our training, we try to do almost one-on-one -on -one because when you're in with a group, everybody has a different question. I mean, but so we do do some programs with a couple of people, but most of the time it's easier to do a half hour one-on-one -on -one Zoom, answer anyone's questions and things like that. We continued our other, how to learn Word, how to do Excel, all our others. We do our 3D printing. And then we also um, added some things, a lot with jobs um, support. We have a one-on-one -on -one job that we moved over. And then we also coordinated with four towns around to host job programs, how to do a virtual interview, how to look for a job virtually and things like that. So. We, I do, I did share some statistics that we, um, we had 626 live programs uh, in, since, in, in 2020. So basically started in March through the end of December. A lot of those were our children's, we moved all our play groups, all our story times on, but um, quite a few were adults. One of our most popular was our jukebox, I can't say it three times fast, a jukebox bingo. And um, which we're gonna have in February again. And that get averages about 75 people. It's a combination trivia, game, music. And um, it's been a lot of fun. And we've gotten some donations of prizes and things like that. So those are um, a lot. The staff really hit the ground running with learning all the technology and um, trying out different things. So we found uh, that people were kind of zoomed out in November, December, January for programs, but now we're starting up again um, to do that. So that's um, in a nutshell of what we're doing. We have a newsletter that goes out to about 2000 people every week. And that's when we announce which programs that we get. We get a lot of some feedback about what types of programs people want and we try to follow up on that. Um, we, um, so in pre-COVID, everything is PC. Uh, we had started working with Senior Center Parks and Rec and we had the, the quarterly, or three times a year that we would all see which other programs we, we would sort of meet and then it would be produced and inserted into the Rocky Hill life. That hasn't gone out the last couple of, um, well, since the spring when nothing happened because of the um, programs. But Missy, uh, Craig and I meet on a regular basis and we're looking forward to like planning out for the new center. Um, one thing about the library is that we can't charge be, um, because of the state library rules. So we have a friends of the library and they raise the money to pay for when we pay for programmers and things like that. Or, and we do a lot of activity kits and the friends of the library support that. So. Mary, could you just, um, you mentioned you have a newsletter that goes out weekly, um, about 2000 people receive your newsletter. I'm assuming that's an electronic distribution. It is, it is. 
I can't share my screen, but I, I mean, I can send it to you all and we can, um, it's also posted on our website too. Yeah, if, if somebody wanted to register, how would they do so? So to register for the newsletter uh, on our website and we'll, we'll highlight it, they can just sign up for it. Um, and then also, and I will, we're also on social media, we can put a link on for that too, but on our website, it's how do I, and then it's get signed up for newsletters. We have several newsletters, but this one's called The Buzz and it's about all the programs that we do. We also ask everyone how um, they heard about the programs and about 60% of them hear about it from uh, our newsletter. Okay. I'm sure, there, I'm sure there's other questions. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you that I'm, I guess, somewhat ignorant. I didn't know this existed. Um, yeah. I, we try to get the information out and I mean, we, we do to our certain segment, but we work, we, we're very lucky on a uh, rare reminder, prints our programs every week. Um, the Rocky Hill Life had been having a calendar with all our programs. The last couple of times it wasn't in there, so but we've been working with them. It is an issue of trying to get out um, information about the library. We post it all on social media. We sometimes pay for ads um, to get it out on social media, but I know I've given John some updates, but then I tend to make them wordy and maybe it gets lost in um, in everything. I know I gave him one a couple of months ago for the council, but um, I should streamline my reports and get the word out more. Excellent. Let me uh, ask Ed and Mimi if, if, if they have questions. I think there's some good information that we're, we're sharing here. Uh, no, actually, I'm just kind of going in and out myself and checking things out. So it's a, it's just a, it's an evolution, and and I I'm glad you were able to come on to tonight and, you know, and say it again that you have these programs. So that's great, and um, um, I I don't have any other questions at this time though. Okay. I just want to th thank Mary. I think her report was very thorough. Um, just as I was listening to what she was saying, though, I just was having a thought if when this new community senior center opens, if we could have, I don't know if we can have an electronic board that might cost money, but if we have some kind of board that would have all like the monthly programs right there at the entrance for all of parks and rec for library for the community center, I think that would be awesome because hopefully a lot of people will come and they'll see all the programs. In At this point, well, Mimi, that is, I think that's Mary Craig and I have discussed that. So similar to the screen that's uh, near the old exercise room that was posted, I think the thought is to have like a bigger um, right inside the door. But I know I can tell you we have discussed that and all agree that that's important. So that is hopefully in the works. Great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, a question for, for John Mayer, how close will the new senior center physically be on the back corner to the back corner of the library? It's close. 15 feet. So we could actually put build a, a two, <laughs> a hallway to the library. Well, they talked connect about the two buildings. <laughs> they talked about it, but I guess when it was first being planned, they talked about it, but the fire marshal really didn't want a, like a huge building for safety reasons, but it was looked at to try to connect, but we're just around the corner. We're also hoping to like, say for our tech help, we can send somebody over and offer tech help over there. So there's like a lot of cross programming. Yeah, I, I think what Mary, and, and thank you for joining us again. Uh, but I think what's really, uh, a, it's valuable the information, but also for people to realize that the library, human services, um, senior and human services, and Parks and Rec with Craig all work closely together on these programs. And it's been a challenge since I've been involved. It's it just the communication piece is doesn't reach out to everybody because we don't have a, a great source. I know that's something that's in the works um, on the town side with the mayor, but what, you know, like I said, the idea of having you here was because Ed had mentioned something and we found out that you already had done it. <laughs> so it was an opportunity to share that information. Yeah, thank you. So, um, you know, hopefully people will go to the library website as well and continue to get the newsletter because, you know, the more people that are participating, you know, the less bored and, and stir crazy we are. 
Right. Especially during COVID. Anybody have any other questions for Mary? No? All right. That'll wrap up our, uh, our agenda. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good evening. Good night. 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 night.